Hello everyone, welcome to the next video. I'm here with my friend Bree. Uh, she has experience over 10 years in LA County as a... ICU nurse, so I can work in the hospital in the intensive care unit with very sick patients. Okay. Like patients on breathing machines or after um, really invasive surgeries, the, the really sick patients, I am at their bedside helping them heal. Okay, perfect. Because this is something very uh, interesting in current situation, because as you know, know, the world is suffering from a world pandemic and we are gonna talk about it a little. Because I really wanna know what's going on because there is a lot of people telling me different stories. I know many people who work in the medical field industry. So we are gonna do interviews with all those people who would like to share their experience. And today we have here Brie, which is one of them, okay? So I prepare a lot of questions um, and let's dive straight into it. What do you think is the current situation in LA County? A pandemic itself is just the fact that there is an illness present in a majority of countries. It doesn't necessarily mean that there is an emergency in every place that this is present. Um, even in our country, in different states are experiencing different things. Here in LA County, it seems like um, we are not experiencing any type of emergency. Um, our government and our media keep saying that we are kind of preparing for a surge of sick patients and it's been over four weeks and we still have not had any sort of surge. They've implemented the social distancing and staying at home um, and you know if this is a viral illness that's spread like the flu as a viral illness is spread then maybe that's helping reduce the numbers but at this point it doesn't sound like anybody is really sure if and when um, this surge of sick patients uh, from this illness is going to take place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you see any conflict between what you and your uh, friends that works in the hospitals all over LA County see on the daily base and what the media and the government reports? Do you see that any conflict? From what I've seen in the media, they um, like um, the governor has said things like the hospitals are at 95% capacity or almost 100% capacity. And that's, that's not what we're seeing here in LA. Um, the major medical centers, the census is actually down. Mm -hmm. So we have less patients currently mm -hmm. and only about 5% of the admitted patient population is a patient that's diagnosed with COVID. Mm -hmm. So a very, very, very small percentage of uh, sick patients are actually uh, patients. Okay, why you think that there is that big difference between information that are shared publicly versus the information that the medical staff knows? When something isn't known and something is new, it's easy to kind of use a fear-based model to gain control of the population. What you mean by controlling the population? Yeah, by telling people that millions and millions of people are going to get sick and millions of people are going to die, it creates a lot of fear. Um, so people are more likely to conform to these stay at home orders or um, social distancing um, and be more willing to figure out how to work from home or avoid going places. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if the threat doesn't seem as large, maybe people wouldn't follow these instructions. From your own experience, uh, do you think that the hospitals were well prepared for this pandemic? Back in January and February, uh, we, before we even had COVID patients, we were already low on supplies because people were actually stealing the supplies in anticipation for this pandemic. Damn. Yeah, so already back in February, before we even had patients, we had to lock up personal protective equipment like masks, like gowns, because people were stealing them. Once we started having more positive patients, even though that number is very, very low, again, people became very fearful and they would use a lot of the personal protective equipment like the masks, like the gowns, with everybody. So it did start to use up uh, mm -hmm. the resources that they had. Mm -hmm. um, so I think right now it varies location to location, and I don't, I don't really have the specifics um, on each location, but in general, it sounds like um, they're limiting to like 
one mask per day they are working on implementing new ways of sterilizing masks creating new equipment and working on having a standardized approach to where it's supposed to be as effective as previous equipment that has been tested for safety they're also working on ordering more of these things but it's it kind of varies hospital hospital do you think that the hospitals are understaffed or do you have or do they have enough employees right here locally the census is low which means the hospitals are not full some of them are 50 to like 75 percent full so actually staff is being sent home because there aren't enough patients there are like staff that are on float pools which are not necessarily full-time staff they get hours when there are a lot of patients so, so um, they are like working just on call yeah kind okay. of like on call okay. so when there are a lot of patients we use a lot of that float pool staff uh -huh. but because there aren't a lot of patients in general not COVID, and there are less sick patients because they've reduced the amount of elective procedures taking place in order to prepare for COVID patients does it mean that whatever is not emergency thing they kind of postpone it until yes. like further yes. further situation if it's okay. not emergent they've canceled that in okay. order to create space to make sure there's space for patients mm -hmm. so that space that they've created isn't actually being filled by patients so they're overstaffed do you guys have enough beds in the in in LA County yeah currently in county it sound in the LA area it sounds like there are plenty of beds uh, most hospitals are not to even close to a hundred percent occupancy and then hospitals locally are also kind of rearranging spaces to help prepare so maybe a space that wasn't originally a bed that they would put a patient in they've been able to transform and make a patient bed so they've also been expanding the amount of patients that they can care for. How does the testing work, do you know? There's conflicting reports about the testing. Um, it sounds like to date, no one has isolated and verified the actual virus itself. Um, they do a PCR test, which takes um, a portion of uh, biological material to search for RNA of an organism and look for a sequence. When they created this COVID test, they didn't isolate an organism first and verify that that is the virus itself. What they did is they isolated genetic material from people, found a certain sequence, and then called that. Oh. So whatever all those patients had in common, what they found in them, they referred this as the virus in them, right? Yes, that's what it sounds like. It doesn't it sound like, like okay. anybody has actually isolated a virus mm -hmm. itself that is responsible for infecting people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the genetic material that they have found can't really 100% say that that is the virus because they've never isolated any viral material. They've isolated RNA, which is found in all of us, mm -hmm. and found a certain sequence of that RNA yeah. that is in this population. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that brings my next question. Do you personally believe in those numbers, either reporting as a infected patients and also the death? You can be honest, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I understand about how they do a PCR test, they extract RNA, they extract the genetic material, and they look for the RNA. And because it's such a small percentage of the material, what they do is they copy it. And then they copy it and copy it and copy it and copy it and copy it to make a bigger sample in order to then find that sequence. So the risk for error can be kind of high if you make an error at the beginning because you're basically copying and copying and copying the same error. So there's risk for error in any test, um, but this test specifically has also not been um, taken to what in the medical field we would call the gold standard. You would take a test like this and you would test those who are sick, who you believe, 
have the illness, you would take a sample from them. And those who are not sick, you would take a sample from them. And the ones who are not sick, you would expect to not find that RNA sample. And the ones who are sick, you would expect to find the RNA sample. And then you would compare those two populations. And that would also help you assess what your natural error rate is for the test itself. Mm -hmm. So that's also never been done. Okay. So there's lots of reasonable things that could increase the error rate for this type of testing. But, you know, I don't know specifics for specific labs and yeah. how everybody is testing. Okay. And so that brings my next question. Do you know anyone who is currently sick? I don't know anybody who's sick. Friends that I know who are currently working with these patients, none of them are sick. I haven't heard about any of my former, um, the people that I used to work with or currently work with are sick. I haven't heard of anybody in my immediate healthcare population mm -hmm. um, being sick. Do you think that we are past divorce? It's hard to say because there are different different areas in the country are experiencing different things. Like New York is experiencing much higher numbers than we are here. And our governor has stated that we are, by estimates, about 11 days, 11 to 14 days behind what New York is experiencing. How they can determine that? I think they're determining, so they don't say. My guess is that they're determining it based on the other models that they've created, like this flattening the curve type of model. Um, these are all just models and estimates and they Do they prove to be right? So far they're not proving to be right. They're, the estimates of who's going to get sick, when they're going to get sick, has been incorrect. Um, not nearly as many people that they thought are going to get sick are getting sick and not nearly many as, as many people are dying as they initially um, projected. That's good news. So for us, why there's, I think they're still saying, oh, we're waiting for that surge of patients who are going to be sick is because in New York, they are having higher numbers. And we are, quote unquote, behind them is what they're saying. Do you think that those numbers can be just higher because they are just testing more people than anywhere else? And that's why that there is more people that can test positive? Currently, New York and California and it sounds like most places are discouraging people with no symptoms or mild symptoms from getting tested. So a huge part of the population who may quote unquote have COVID are not even being tested for it because they're, they have no symptoms or they're kind of healthy enough that they fight it off naturally without needing hospitalization or medical support. Originally their models were suggesting that that would be 80% of the cases would be no symptoms or healthy and not requiring any sort of medical assistance. So the CDC and the WHO have recommended that even in suspected cases, when a person dies, you can label them as even if they didn't even use the tests that they've been using to confirm that it's COVID. So even if it's suspected, you can just count them as a case. So that can bring us to those high numbers. Right. right. And also the normal numbers, the average kind of numbers for flu deaths, pneumonia deaths, and other kind of illnesses like that are down. So there are reports saying that the increase in deaths may be skewed based on the fact that we are seeing a pretty large decrease in the usual amount of normal pneumonia or normal flu deaths. Don't you think that this is something that can uh, bring more panic into like general population when they are like post publishing a numbers that are not maybe 100% right? Yeah, I think when you look at the bigger picture and the numbers that 80% of people who get this will have no symptoms or very mild symptoms and recover just fine. They don't even account for those people when they're giving us the numbers. So they're saying that there's a very high death rate based on the fact that well, they've only tested a very small portion of the population and of those positives, a certain portion have died. And so that makes it look like a higher percentage of people are dying from COVID. But if you take the 80% of people who have no symptoms or very little symptoms and group them in with all the other positives, 
then the death rate is much, much lower, much closer to like a flu rather than something like what they were initially thinking was SARS or MERS. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's, it sounds like it's still a little bit higher estimate than the flu, but it's much closer to the flu than it is the original thought of like, I think originally they were talking like a 10% death rate or something crazy like that. But when you combine the 80% of people who will be, have no symptoms or very mild symptoms, the death rate looks much more like a 0.2% or something much closer to the flu. That's very, I guess, normal mm -hmm. um, type so of illness. You said from your experience when you work in department, when you have the ventilators and stuff like that, have you ever seen like, let's say somebody really suffering with like a flu, but like really heavy flu, somebody older who would need like the ventilation or somebody with like a lung cancer. Have you seen those kind of stuff versus what you hear about what, what uh, patients suffering with COVID are experiencing? sounds like there's conflicting reports and it depends on whether the person is healthy or do they have a lot of diseases in any, any way? Do they already have a lung disease? Do they already have a metabolic problem? Do they already have high blood pressure and heart disease? The body's going to respond differently in general from that. But typically with like a viral pneumonia from a flu, if it really hits the lungs hard, then maybe they would need a ventilator. Maybe they would need extra oxygen for a little while while their body tries to recover and we use other medical supportive treatments to mm -hmm. help them recover. So what us as a general population, what we should do from like information wise, like where should we getting our information from? And also like, are there any uh, medical like advices we should follow besides what they are already telling us? like those general things, like wash your hands and stuff like that and keep your distance. Yeah, wash your hands, disinfect surfaces. Um, the most important things are how we take care of ourselves. Um, things that improve your immune system, like reducing stress by meditation. Mm -hmm. All of these things can help your immunity and your system in general, just be more optimal. So if you do get sick, that it may be less likely to cause as much harm. So you want to try to optimize yourself. There are other things like herbs and all sorts of things that are shown to help the immune system as well. Where should people get the information? Mm. They don't believe in oh, media man. anymore. Like I, I talked to so many people and they told me, hey, after this, I already lost the faith in them. The titles are purposely made to like really grab your attention, show you the worst scenario. But if, yeah. you, if you keep reading, you actually realize, well, this is actually not what the title was about. The article is completely different. So do you think like that the stress and like a fear can be worse than the actual disease? Yeah, I definitely think that the fear and what's going on is probably going to be much worse than the actual illness itself. Um, it's hard to know where you should get your news because most of it is controlled by the same companies and um, it, it's really hard. So I would say just question question everything like just because somebody says it doesn't mean you should just accept it there are alternative viewpoints there are alternative news sources that are working to try to get more accurate information to the public less fear-based information to the public um, but a lot of those things are being shut down as well um, so it, it's really hard to know i hear i don't want to say it's like 100 percent true that I hear that nurses in LA County and doctors are banned from talking about the current situation and if they will do they will lose their job have you heard those kind of stories too yes I've heard that most people are afraid of speaking up yeah and I seen it big time because I know more people from the medical field and I talk to them now and I see in their eyes that they are afraid to talk and as you told me, many of those people, there is actually not much going on at their work, meaning the, the illness wise, right. but it's more their, their inner orders that they have to follow of being means like, do not talk about that we have one mask per shift, that we have to sterilize it by ourselves. We have to create a ways how we can sterilize that. So I see a a huge change in people's behavior, not only in the general public, but also like among my friends who I know for a very long time. And I can tell that something is going on that they are not telling us. 
Have you also experienced like stuff like that? Yeah, I feel like that is a large part of what's going on. Mm -hmm. They're using fear, they're trying to keep people quiet, forcing people to be quiet and not allow people to just speak up about what they're seeing. It's, to me, I think that's more manipulation, more abuse, more control, more fear. It's, yeah, okay. it's a way to keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's pretty much all what I wanted to ask. Guys, if you have any questions, you can write them down. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use those questions uh, questioning Brie again, but I may will use those questions to question somebody else for the future video, you know, because I'm sure that uh, there's many people out there who want to know some information from additional sources, exactly as you told me, that people are looking more for like other independent sources than a mainstream media. So I think this is the great way how you can ask. Also, if you know someone who works in LA, in LA area, in LA County, Orange County, you can always contact me with some contact to them because I would love to talk to like all kinds of people from different field of the medical industry, uh, not only nurses and doctors, but like also other people. I don't know if somebody here is making it a mask, selling the mask, you know, I would also like to know information about that. Uh, I think I don't have any more questions for you. Uh, if there is something else you want to share with the world, you can use it, you can use your time. If you brought some notes that you would like to mention and we didn't cover those, you can also say it. I think that's really all I can think of for now. Yeah, is it yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. All right, then thank you very much for coming and uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.